Baha'u'llah was the teacher and the founder of the Baha'i Faith. He and his teachings are believed to be prophesied in Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and other religions. Baha'u'llah was born in 1817 in Tehran, Persia, in present-day Iran. The word Baha means glory or splendor. The Baha'i faith rests on three core principles, unity of God, unity of religion, and unity of humankind. Approximately seven million people today in many countries adhere to the Baha'i faith. Their scriptures are translated into 800 languages and there are houses of worship in just about every corner of the world. Baha'i principles envision an ideal society. They are gender equality, elimination of all forms of prejudice, whether religious, racial, class, or national, harmony of religion and science, universal opportunity of education for all, a universal auxiliary language, which all humanity can use to cooperate quickly with one another, a judicious world government, and the elimination of extremes of wealth and poverty. Many people, like the Baha'i followers, see a noble society as a real goal to be pursued in everyday life. Today we present the sage wisdom of Baha'u'llah with an excerpt from the Holy Book, Gems of Divine Mysteries. Gems of Divine Mysteries. The essence of the Divine Mysteries and the journeys of ascent set forth for those who long to draw nigh unto God, the Almighty, the Ever Forgiving. Blessed be the righteous that quaff from these crystal streams. He is the Exalted, the Most High. O thou who treadest the path of justice and beholdest the countenance of mercy, thine epistle was received, thy question was noted, and the sweet accents of thy soul were heard from the inmost chambers of thy heart, whereupon the clouds of the divine will were raised to rain upon thee the outpourings of heavenly wisdom, to divest thee of all that thou hadst acquired aforetime, to draw thee from the realms of contradiction unto the retreats of oneness, and to lead thee to the sacred streams of his law. Perchance thou mayest quaff therefrom, repose therein, quench thy thirst, refresh thy soul, and be numbered with those whom the light of God hath guided aright in this day. Concealed as I remain in the hidden habitation of mine inner being, Forbidden as I may be from divulging that which God hath bestowed upon me of the wonders of his knowledge, the gems of his wisdom, and the tokens of his power, yet am I loath to frustrate the hopes of one who have approached the sanctuary of grandeur, sought to enter within the precincts of eternity, and aspire to soar in the immensity of this creation at the dawning of the divine decree. I shall therefore relate unto thee certain truths from among those which God hath vouchsafed unto me, this only to the extent that souls can bear and minds endure, lest the malicious raise a clamour or the dissemblers hoist their banners. I implore God to graciously aid me in this, for unto such as beseech him, he is the all-bounteous, and of those who show mercy, he is the most merciful. Know then that it behooveth thine eminence to ponder from the outset these questions in thy heart. What hath prompted the diverse peoples and kindreds of the earth to reject the apostles whom God hath sent unto them in his might and power, whom he hath raised up to exalt his cause and ordained to be the lamps of eternity within the niche of his oneness? For what reason have the people turned aside from them, disputed about them, risen against and contended with them, on what grounds have they refused to acknowledge their apostleship and authority, nay, denied their truth, and reviled their persons, even slaying or banishing them? O thou who hast set foot in the wilderness of knowledge, and taken abode within the ark of wisdom, 
not until thou hast grasped the mysteries concealed in that which we shall relate unto thee, canst thou hope to attain to the stations of faith and certitude in the cause of God, and in those who are the manifestations of his cause, the daysprings of his command, the treasuries of his revelation, and the repositories of his knowledge. Shouldst thou fail in this, thou wouldst be numbered with them that have not striven for the cause of God, nor inhaled the fragrance of faith from the raiment of certitude, nor scaled the heights of the divine unity, nor yet recognized the stations of divine singleness within the embodiment of praise and the essences of sanctity. Strive then, O my brother, to apprehend this matter, that the veils may be lifted from the face of thy heart, and that thou mayest be reckoned among them whom God hath graced with such penetrating vision as to behold the most subtle realities of his dominion, to fathom the mysteries of his kingdom, to perceive the signs of his transcendent essence in this mortal world, and to attain a station wherein one seeth no distinction amongst his creatures, and findeth no flaw in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Through the power of God and his might, I shall now relate certain passages revealed in the books of old and mention some of the signs heralding the appearance of the manifestations of God in the sanctified persons of his chosen ones, that thou mayest recognize the dayspring of this everlasting morn and behold this fire that blazeth in the tree which is neither of the east nor of the west. Perchance thine eyes may be opened upon attaining the presence of thy Lord, and thy heart partake of the blessings concealed within these hidden treasuries. Render thanks then unto God, who hath singled thee out for this grace, and who hath numbered thee with them that are assured of meeting their Lord. In the second gospel, according to Mark, the dove of holiness speaketh in such terms, For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And it singeth later with the same melodies as before, without change or alteration. God verily is a witness unto the truth of my words. And in the third gospel according to Luke, it is recorded, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, know that the kingdom of God hath drawn nigh. And in the fourth gospel, according to John, it is recorded, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness. And elsewhere he saith, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, and yet again, nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Such is the text of the verses revealed in the past. By him besides whom there is none other God, I have chosen to be brief, for were I to recount all the words that have been sent down unto the prophets of God from the realm of his supernal glory and the kingdom of his sovereign might, all the pages and tablets of the world would not suffice to exhaust my theme. References similar to those mentioned, nay even more sublime and exalted, have been made in all the books and scriptures of old. Be fair in thy judgment and reflect upon these exalted utterances. Inquire then of those who lay claim to knowledge without a proof or testimony from God. 
and who remain heedless of these days wherein the orb of knowledge and wisdom have dawned above the horizon of divinity, rendering unto each his due, and assigning unto all their rank and measure as to what they can say concerning these illusions. Verily their meaning hath bewildered the minds of men, and that which they conceal of the consummate wisdom and latent knowledge of God, even the most sanctified souls have been powerless to uncover. Should they say these words are indeed from God and have no interpretation other than their outward meaning, then what objection can they raise against the unbelievers among the people of the book? For when the latter saw the aforementioned passages in their scriptures and heard the literal interpretations of their divines, they refused to recognize God in those who are the manifestations of His unity, the exponents of His singleness, and the embodiments of His sanctity, and failed to believe in them and submit to their authority. The reason was that they did not see the sun darken, or the stars of heaven fall to the ground, or the angels visibly descend upon the earth, and hence they contended with the prophets and messengers of God. Nay, inasmuch as they found them at variance with their own faith and creed, they hurled against them such accusations of imposture, folly, waywardness and misbelief as I am ashamed to recount. Refer to the Quran, that thou mayest find mention of all this, and be of them that understand its meaning. Even to this day do these people await the appearance of that which they have learned from their doctors and imbibed from their divines. Thus do they say, When shall these signs be made manifest, that we may believe? But if this be the case, how could ye refute their arguments, invalidate their proofs, and challenge them concerning their faith and their understanding of their books and the sayings of their leaders? And should they reply, The books that are in the hands of this people, which they call the Gospel and attribute to Jesus, the Son of Mary, have not been revealed by God and proceed not from the manifestations of His Self, then this would imply a cessation in the abounding grace of Him who is the source of all grace. If so, God's testimony to His servants would have remained incomplete and His favor proven imperfect. His mercy would not have shown resplendent, nor would His grace have overshadowed all. For if at the ascension of Jesus His book had likewise ascended unto heaven, then how could God reprove and chastise the people on the day of resurrection, as hath been written by the Imams of the faith and affirmed by its illustrious divines? Ponder then in thine heart, matters being such as thou dost witness, and as we also witness, where canst thou flee, and with whom shalt thou take refuge, and to whom wouldst thou turn thy gaze? In what land shalt thou dwell, and upon what seat shalt thou abide? In what path shalt thou tread, and at what hour wilt thou find repose? What shall become of thee in the end? Where shalt thou secure the cord of thy faith, and fasten the tie of thine obedience? By him who revealeth himself in his oneness, and his own self beareth witness to his unity. Should there be ignited in thy heart the burning brand of the love of God, thou wouldst seek neither rest nor composure, neither laughter nor repose, but wouldst hasten to scale the higher summits in the realms of divine nearness, sanctity and beauty. Thou wouldst lament as a soul bereaved, and weep as a heart filled with longing. Nor wouldst thou repair to thy home and abode, unless God would lay bare before thee his course. O thou who hast soared to the realm of guidance and ascended to the kingdom of virtue, Shouldst thou desire to apprehend these celestial illusions, to witness the mysteries of divine knowledge, and to become acquainted with his all-encompassing word, then it behooveth thine eminence to inquire into these and other questions pertaining to thine origin and ultimate goal from those whom God hath made to be the wellspring of his knowledge, the heaven of his wisdom, and the ark of his mysteries. For were it not for those effulgent lights that shine above the horizon of his essence, the people would know not their left hand from their right, how much less could they scale the heights of the inner realities, or probe the depths of their subtleties. We beseech God therefore to immerse us in these surging seas, 
to grace us with the presence of these life-bearing breezes and to cause us to abide in these divine and lofty precincts. Perchance we may divest ourselves of all that we have taken from each other and strip ourselves of such borrowed garments as we have stolen from our fellow men, that he may attire us instead with the robe of his mercy and the raiment of his guidance, and admit us into the city of knowledge. Thank you, kind-hearted viewers, for joining us today for Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. Animal World, our co-inhabitants, is up next after noteworthy news. Farewell for now, and heaven bless. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.